Okay, what's going on you guys? So, this is gonna be a, a lot different of a video than what I've posted in the past. I haven't done like an introduction in a long time, so I've, I have, we have a lot of new people on the channel. I really appreciate all of you guys joining me. Um, hopefully you don't hate me for this. <laughs> but, so my name's Andrew. Uh, I'm a fly fishing guide. I guide on the Truckee River and on Pyramid Lake in Nevada. I live in Reno. I run this YouTube channel. Uh, make videos. I used to be a photographer. Um, and now I just make videos. I actually serve tables at a restaurant. That just makes sense meat for, meat for me. Uh, recently I went on a trip with a couple of YouTubers and they don't fly fish. They all basically conventional fish. Um, and it looked like so much fun. Like it looked like, like just the amount of like the technical ability that was required um, the thought that went into it, into selecting the spot, you know, all of it as a whole, it just looked very fun. And like, I love fly fishing. I grew up, I've fly fished for literally 20 years and I'm 25. So I don't know if that puts into perspective. So it's been my whole life. When I was a kid, but from that three to eight, nine years old, when I kind of lacked the mechanics to successfully fly fish in all situations, um, I used to conventional fish. I would throw spinning rods. I'd I caught a bunch of trout at Crowley Lake on spinners when I was young because I couldn't set the hook and keep a fish hooked. And I, you know, basically I used to conventional fish all the time. I used to be, I used to bass fish. I'm from Bakersfield, California. So I used to actually spend a lot of time fishing these ponds, fishing these lakes all around us. And uh, there was no trout in those. It was all bass fishing. So I'd go throw a drop shot rig. It was my all time favorite rig or catch fish on buzz baits or chatter baits or you name it. Um, after going on this trip, I realized that I have been cutting myself short in this like forever pursuit to only catch fish on a fly rod. Um, I catch a lot of bass on fly rods. I fish them all the time. I love bass fishing. Um, I catch a lot of trout, you know, I catch you fish the ocean with it, but fly fishing is not the best method for every single situation. I think if you're on a river uh, and you're nymph fishing, there's nothing that can come even close to the effectiveness of fly fishing, uh, unless they're on a, you know, a, the, unless they're chasing bait, which then you can throw a spinning rod and or a streamer if you're fly fishing, um, and you can throw a spinner bait and catch fish on all this. Not spinner bait, uh, a spoon or whatever. I, it's like I'm saying, I my knowledge of fly fi or of general fishing outside of fly fishing is very minimal. Um, it's what I knew when I was eight years old and then I've obsessed over fly fishing for my entire life up to this point. Um, but I went on this trip, watched these guys. It looked super fun. And I realized that I want to do that. I don't want to just fly fish just out of, I don't know, like ego, which is essentially what it is. Like when I see, when I used to see people conventional fishing, I would actually get mad. Like if they were fishing a spot that I wanted to go fish. I'd be like, oh, gear guys, just ruining that spot. And that's super lame. And that sucks because the only people that I've ever met that actually have that mentality towards other fishermen are fly fishermen. But I mean, I guess it's because it's the only people I'm ever really around. But those people, like, it's just a part of fly fishing kind of to just be an ass. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have experienced it, whether you fly fish or conventionally fish too. Like, um, they, that's it, not the nicest community of people. They're very judgmental. They're kind of rude if they're not doing what they're doing or whatever. And I hate it. I absolutely hate it. And I tell people all the time, I hate the fly fishing culture. I'm a part of it. I mean, I, I don't know if I've done my part to really like make it any better, but, um, this whole thing is basically just going to be about me relearning how to bass fish, long story short. And I'm super excited for that. I'm super excited to have another technique that I know nothing about. So my learning is my, like fly fishing at this point for me is like, I know what I'm doing in almost all scenarios. I, I've not really done a ton of saltwater fly fishing, but if you're talking freshwater fishing in the lower 48, I'm confident I can basically show up to any spot and more than likely catch a fish. Um, and that's just on my, I love researching. I love knowing what's going to happen as best I can before I'm in that situation. Um, and that's going to help me with bass fishing. It's actually going to probably make me very effective at bass fishing because of the amount of research and time I put into what I'm doing before I even go do it. 
Um, but I'm going to relearn how to bass fish and I'm super excited. Um, obviously my channel is all fly fishing all, all the time and I'm not going to stop fly fishing. Obviously fly fishing is my life's passion. It's what I basically want to do for my whole life for work, for whatever. But I think that bass fishing and specifically just conventional fishing, like with the proper technique and being an all around angler in all situations is what I want to do. And, um, I need to learn how to conventional fish. I need to learn the gear. I need to learn, I need to acquire the gear. I need to get all the things that I need to do that. And so right now we're going to drive to Shields. Um, uh, I went to Dick's Sporting Goods yesterday. They got rid of their fishing section. I went to Walmart, pretty pick through this whole stuff going on right now with people getting stimulus checks. There's a lot of people spending a lot of money on things. Um, but I know Shields and Sportsman's Warehouse, actually Sportsman's Warehouse was pretty barren too yesterday. Um, so we're going to Shields essentially. Uh, I know Shields is going to have most of their stuff stocked. As of right now, I think I'm going to get myself a spinning rod, uh, a casting rod, uh, a casting reel, like a bait caster and at least a spinning reel. And then I'm going to try to get almost all the gear that I need in terms of, uh, in terms of like going and having a general lineup of gear. So like I'll be able to have the rigs for drop shotting, jigging for, you know, pitching and punching. These are all the terms that I've read, by the way, I don't, I don't remember really doing much of anything other than just throwing a drop shot rig when I was a kid. So, um, I've done as much research as I can uh, on the selection of gear and you know, it's just going to be a learning curve. I I've spent 20 years and I know fly fishing rods forwards and backwards. I know exactly what I like. I know exactly what works. I know what's worth the price and what's not worth the price. I don't know any of that when it comes to conventional fishing. I like, I go in and I can't, I can't even read half the rods because <laughs> their logos are written in cursive and I'm like, can't even see what they say. But um, I do know what a good rod feels like. I know what I'm looking for. I'm going to be looking for some faster action rods um, for the jigging and for plastic warming and that kind of stuff. Um, I've watched quite a few videos just on overall techniques and where a spinning rod is, is more ideal and where a casting rod. And the way I perceived it from a specific video um, is casting, contact, spinning, slack. So... When I'm jig fishing, I want to have contact with that at all times so I can feel those ticks and all that stuff. And when I'm maybe throwing a drop shot and I'm fishing something a little bit slower, um, I want to throw a spinning rod that I can have the rod a little bit slack and have the line slack and pick up that slack for that presentation. And then if I feel something, I can hit it. Um, so I'm going to get a casting rod, a casting reel, a spinning rod, a spinning reel, and then some hooks for Texas rigs and Carolina rigs, some bullet weights, maybe a couple crankbaits. I don't know. If I'm going to be doing a lot of fishing from shore and crankbaits definitely just crank right into the, <laughs> right into the bank in front of me. Um, so I, that might be something that I get once I start using my water masters to get out onto the water in some of these lakes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go get a little array. I'm going to take you guys along. I never film in stores, so I'm going to apologize in advance if I'm a little awkward because I've never done like a shopping video <laughs> Uh, I'm not trying to like flex on people with the money that I have. I'm just honestly so excited to get some gear and have a new technique to focus on and nerd out over and like figure out as best I can. And hopefully you guys enjoy that. Um, like I said, I'm not going to stop making fly fishing videos. I'm not going to stop making fly fishing content. I'm just going to use this gear for some content and to, you know, just show the process because a lot of people that bass fish, try and fly fish and get asked all the time like what should i get what rods what's a good rod for 50 bucks what should i do here what should i do here and they don't have the answer because they bass fish and they are and they conventional fish and they know conventional gear way better than i know conventional gear but i know fly fishing gear so like it, you know if we can find a way to cross these paths a little bit and like i don't know make a community of people that are willing to do both because it's a better technique to do both um I think that that's going to be important. I think that's going to be fun. And so we're going to go over to Shields. I'm going to bring my GoPro in just because it's a little less conspicuous than this big old camera that I have here. But uh, let's get over to Shields and take a gander at what we're going to be working with, what we're going to be looking at price-wise. I'm assuming I'm going to, I, I should be able to get out at like $150 to maybe $200 per setup. And those are like, that's a decent rod. That's a pretty good rod and a decent reel. Um, Maybe 175. I'll show you guys when I get there. There's a couple. There's a couple reels that 
are on the that are in on my uh, spectrum. We're gonna go in there, take a gander, and see if we can find anything. So stay tuned, guys. All right, gang. I've made it to Shields. We're recording on the GoPro just because it's a little more inconspicuous, but uh, it's like. I don't even know where to start, honestly. So we're gonna just look at some stuff and see what we're looking at. Hmm. I don't know if I like this green. I don't think I like it at all. There's literally, like how do you even choose? I think what I'm gonna do is they have a, Shields has an actual like fishing person. I'm gonna ask that guy. Cause I got my budget. I know what I'm gonna try and spend and I need to just make sure I don't make the wrong decision with I don't need the nicest stuff, but I don't want to buy something that's absolute garbage, so. All right, so I'm gonna start grabbing some soft plastics. Uh, the associate's reeling up, spooling up some reels, and then he, he's all ears, so let's look at some stuff. From what I hear, gotta go with some stick baits. They're all water now, All right, and then we got a green and purple into that. It's so funny, these are so much bigger than what I would normally fish for anything. Like that's a pretty decent sized streamer at the time, but we'll get a beaver. I know that these whack. That was a watermelon red. Let's maybe get, that was a good smaller sized one. I don't like the huge stuff. I'll go a little, get those. I mean, one of those will do for now. I think I'm gonna go with some of these smaller three inch just seems more appropriate. And I'll get one of these four inches. And I think I need some sort of, I already got some sort of crop pattern, but these ridge tails look good. Again, I have no clue what I'm looking at though. Excuse my ignorance in product selection. I do just, I know what colors I like. And I like that kind of burnt orange. If you're wondering why I get so many crayfish patterns, is because where I live, this is like the forage food. This is what, I mean, most places it is this way, but specifically where I'm at, this is one of the major forage foods for these bass. So that's why I'm getting so many of these. Icky heads, these have a small screw or a spring on top to screw them in. So we're gonna go eighth ounce and three sixteenth ounce shaky heads. So those will be for crayfish, that kind of stuff for jigs. Get some hooks for just Texas rigging. I've also seen that these are really good for not tearing up your wacky rigs. So I'm gonna get some of these. We'll do a black and blue of a beaver as well. Just another crayfish imitation. If you're wondering why I get so many crayfish patterns, is because where I live, this is like the forage food. This is what, I mean, most places it is this way, but specifically where I'm at, this is one of the major forage foods for these bass. So that's why I'm getting so many of these. Jeremy? Yeah. Yo, Jeremy's helping me out. <laughs> uh, I have no clue what I'm doing. I mean, I have a general idea, but like, he's like, I usually throw a fluke. <laughs> and I have no clue what a fluke is. And he just laughs at me and walks me over here. Dude, fluke. Okay, yeah. okay, so I know what it is. Right. I just have never purchased so them. So I never really seen the name. Weightless Texas rig it. Okay. Um, if they're busting on the surface, you throw it up top, work it fast, because it will sink right. nice and slow though. Right. But you could even finesse it, just let it sink. Mm. I mean, you're waiting 10, 20 seconds to get it down deep though. This is but... what I needed. This is what I needed. I can watch all the videos <laughs> I want. But uh, actually, yeah, I'll grab a bag, a pack of those. Yeah, and I need you, to get, you want this you get a though. swimming jig or what? Oh yeah, that's the move. This is the color I want, super that's salty bait fish. That's the color, bro. Man, this is this is getting a lot better now that Jeremy, <laughs> now that Jeremy's coming into my life. So we're gonna, we're gonna get some stuff rolling right now. Every question I ask is dumb. <laughs> I like using super line because okay. it has a thicker gauge hook. Gotcha. It gets a little bit of faster sink rate. Are these four aughts? Yeah, or you can go... I'll go three aught and four aught. Super line belly weighted. You're just going to have to buy the springs. Uh, CPS springs. These have springs on? Oh, wait, these no, they springs. don't. They're not weighted, that's why. Right. Oh, that makes sense. They don't have anything to anchor them on with. Right. So okay. if you want a faster sink rate, if, if you're marking them deep, go with the belly weight. Gotcha, gotcha. All news to me. What else do I need from over here? Oh, yeah, weights. Yeah, definitely yeah. need weights. Yeah. Weights. Yeah. Uh, well, I just grabbed these because I can use these for Texas rigs. Yeah, you got the weight, bullet weights. No, are they only right here or where are they yeah, at? Yeah, I mean, 
if I need uh, tungsten. I don't think you need tungsten. That's what I was gonna say. You could just get lead. Yeah, let's go lead. Okay. Yeah. These are bullet weights? No. Where are the bullet luck? weights? There are no bullet weights. Yeah. He's just letting me. He's letting me look for it. And there's literally nothing for me to find. <laughs> I mean, one he he right says here, good. Dude. He says good luck. Uh, well, one sixteenth will work at least for the shallow stuff that I'm fishing. I assume. Yeah, and then you're dropping. Oh man, my world is it's diff This is a different world. I can answer literally any question about fly fishing, but once we get into the conventional stuff, I'm an idiot. What about a decent topwater plug? And he goes, ooh, whopper flopper. I love the names in bass fishing, because yeah. the names of fly fishing are stupid. Oh, that's the mo oh, Jesus. These are smallmouth candy right here. These? Um, typically on the Delta, Mother. I use moon. Look at that. But monkey butt. How am I gonna spend 17 bucks and justify that? Monkey butt, bone, your perch colors. What about like a lipless crankbait just to fish that shallow? Or, eh, eh. A lipless could work too, you just gotta burn it. Right, right, right. And you want something you can fish a little slower. Right. Do you have any like small like spooks, like Zara spooks or anything? Cause that, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about, dude. Well, see the thing is, that fluke, you would work it as a spook. Uh, I'd work it shallow because we could go weightless you on just, it. Yeah, you cast it up there and then you just work it. It'll just twist and it'll back sink, and forth. It'll sink enough. Right. It'll still drop a little bit. Yeah. Mm. But if you work it fast enough, it's on the surface. Yeah, and I don't need to get, I, you know, I don't, I feel like me getting technical about bearings is like somebody that doesn't know how to cast a fly rod getting technical about an $800 fly rod. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I just want something that's like going to last a long time, that casts well, that doesn't, I mean, obviously, bird's nesting is typically user error. Correct. But, like, I don't know. I don't even know why I brought up bird's nesting then. Well, the I'm tossing around the idea of getting a Corrado. Should I do that? Probably not. I don't know if I'd be able to appreciate it. So this nice guy is running me through the ringer on decent stuff I can get that will work just fine. But I'm just being... I just sold one or two rods to get all the money that I'm spending on this, and I'm going to be able to get couple nice setups with what I got from two just two rods alone and all the gear I need so kind of thing I might just get something decent you know all right so I think I'm gonna go with the Shimano SLX right yeah SLX oh, yeah. $100 rod and then I might get a decent casting rod because I can get a pretty good spinning setup right. out, the, out the door for about 100 bucks so right. I'll probably go with that I'm gonna come back and grab that okay. in a second okay and then I need to make a decision on, on our bait caster real quick all right, I have some debate to do. I'll let you guys know what my official decision here is. All right, so, Tatula, right, Tatula? Tatula. Tatula, yes. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Tatula, um, it is a Daiwa baitcaster, regularly $200. This one's marked down to 170. So I think I'm gonna go with this one and then uh, stick with that rod that, that Shimano was it DLX. SLX. SLX. Yep. So that's going to be my bait casting setup. That's a pretty mean setup. That's going to be pretty sick. And then I'm going to go with a, it's a lightning, right? The Berkeley lightning rod. For 40 bucks, it's pretty darn sensitive. That's what I'm saying, yeah. So we'll do the, the Berkeley casting rod for the 40 bucks. The only reason I got rid of it was I was bass He tells me the, now he got, he got rid of it. Well, because I'm telling you this, because the only reason I got rid of it, well, I upgraded, was because a okay. co-worker said, hey, try this rod, and it's a, it's a $200 G Loomis rod. Oh, and you're right. like, oh. And then maybe. I go back to my rod and I'm just like, well, I don't this feel is a anything. Noodle. Anymore. Yeah, you know exactly, I mean? exactly. No, and that's and that's the way it goes. But so we'll probably go with that rod. Cause I, you know, getting into it, I'm probably spending a little more than I should on this yes. on this bait casting setup. Yes. But this is gonna probably be my like go-to bait casting setup for a this long time. This will last you. Yeah. I'm gonna go with that. So all right, so got the reels. These two bad boys. <laughs> Now we're going to go look at yeah, line. line. So if we can. Do, yeah, if we can, there's like 15 people standing in this aisle. And like I said, I don't like filming in front of people super often. So we'll see how it goes. Like for me, it's Shimano or nothing. <laughs> honestly, yeah, no, I, get, honestly, I get that. I get that, dude. I get that. Dude, I totally so, get that. and I've, I've had spider wire break on me. I've had uh, suffix break on me. It's Power Pro. It's just my go-to. Can we walk around? Get over there. You know what I'm going to say? You're going to say, uh, I'm going to get Shimano. Well, Lord help me. <laughs> now, uh, I usually don't splurge on things is what I should say. Um, but I figured 
there were a couple combos that I was looking at that were like $220, $230. And they had that uh, Tatula, Tatula, Tatula? I don't know. Um, they had that marked down like $50. So I was like, well, I'll pay 30 more bucks and get a better rod and a way better reel. That's going to last me a long time. So the way I look at it is it's relatively justified compared to um, the fly, the money that I spent on fly fishing gear. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go pick up my buddy Cade, who is at, uh, his place. Um, and we're going to do some bass ho pond hopping around this area that I'm in right now. And maybe we'll find some fish. Maybe we won't, but at least I'll be able to get these rods out. I had spooled up the spinning rod with braid and I spooled up the casting rod or with a 20 pound braid on the spinning rod. And then I'll run a fluorocarbon leader. Um, just so I don't have too much of a flex in that. And then I'll run, uh, I'm running fluorocarbon, uh, 15 pound fluoro on the casting rod. So should be pretty good. Should be set up about right. Um, both of them were kind of heavy sticks, but both for obviously for bassing. So they both should, uh, it should work out pretty well. So I'm pretty excited to get fishing with this. Like I said, I haven't really like walked into a place and been like, I have no clue what I'm looking at, what I'm talking about. I've known what's going on with, with fly fishing gear for a long time. And it's kind of fun uh, getting back into something that I get to just start from ground zero and learn about and don't have any, I really have no expectations for myself and for what it is. All I know is it should be very fun and should be able to be a good way for me to connect and fish with a bunch of people. I'm going to go fish with Jeremy, the guy that helped me out um, uh, at some point in the next week and a half or so. So that's cool too. But uh, yeah, let's go pick up Cade and uh, see if we can find some fish. I would also just like to point out I don't mean to just like talk trash on the fly fishing community because there's a lot of really cool people and great companies and all kinds of positives and like fly fishing has been a huge positive impact on my life. So I don't mean to talk trash on that, but you knew there was a butt coming. I've never had that positive of an experience going and talking to somebody that works in a fly shop ever in my life. And I've been to a lot of fly shops and I've been to a lot of places um, and I've never like genuinely had that good of a time having somebody like willing to teach me and talk to me about stuff that I don't know. And I think that that's a really, really big problem. And I think it's a big reason why people, one, don't love fly fishing or don't want to get into it because it seems like the culture really sucks. And honestly, it does. I would say like without, like from my experience and obviously like as an influencer, I catch a lot of flack for making videos in places that people claim are secret or, you know, don't want other people going there and blah, 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 blah. But from my experience before that, and even when people don't have any clue what I do or whatever, like it's never that positive of an experience. And I think that's a shame, but also it makes me super stoked to be doing this because I think I'm going to have a lot more fun meeting a lot more people and being able to get out and spend time with a lot of people that are just really fun and, and have a great time fishing. Not to say I don't have a lot of great friends that I fly fish with, but I'm just saying like a majority of the people that I've run into that conventional fish are just stoked to go fishing. And I think that that's going to be super fun. Um, and I'm just really, really excited. And so, uh, yeah, I'm saying, what's up? It's Cade. <laughs> see, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is why you got to have friends. I don't know if you can see this. It might be overexposed when I go into the sun. <laughs> Just the pounds of soft plastics. That's, and that yellow one's like all UV stuff. In there. Oh, beautiful. Kate's a stud. Uh, my goof ass forgot to buy a tackle box. So I'm gonna be have, have some really full pockets, I guess. <laughs> You, can do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna rig these separately. So I'm gonna have that one rigged for something heavier, and then I'll plastic one with the spinning rod. Listen, like, why is it so floppy right now? Well, because there's a thing I have to tighten. I was like, this doesn't feel anything like it did in the store. What's the problem? Well, that's just because I'm an idiot. That's what the problem is. And now we're cruising. Dude, I know it comes out of it, but like, this <laughs> won't stop spinning. It's just getting in my way. How do I get it out? Do I pull it up? No, wrap. Oh, uh, no, no, I pull up. Fire. Yeah, Cade, what are you talking about? It's wrapped. I know what I'm talking about. Look at me. I've done this for a total of uh, six minutes. Oh, beautiful. I went braid because it's low stretch. Um, 
and it's, basically this is not as nice of a rod so i wanted a little less stretch in the line for a little more feel since the rod's not going to be quite as fast as the other one that might that makes sense to me logically but does it make sense i don't know i don't know what i'm doing look at that my first ever conventional fishing knot <laughs> nope still blood knot but uh now i am realizing that i probably should have pliers because i can't bite through braid i mean i can try but i probably shouldn't so a little over the hook deal so f you fly fishing <laughs> Cause you don't have crap like this. Does, this, this worm just goes through this, right? Yeah, I believe so. And then you just hook the hook the hook underneath. And yeah. Like, yeah. All right, so we got a little cock ring on this uh, on my wacky worm, and I'm pretty sure this just hooks right here. Yep. Just like so. Oh, dude, that's a fire description on the front. <laughs> oh, the old wacky tool. That's sweet. Look at that. Oh, baby. Finesse. They didn't even stand a chance. in your bait caster bird's nest in your bait caster nobody said anything about spinning rods i think there my dude might have put a little too much line on this reel and that's what caused that he alerted me of a large bass that he just spooked so i'm gonna oh bird's nest right away oh god well maybe not maybe i'm gonna get it out you're supposed to keep your finger on it the whole time right yeah and then are those brakes? Are the brakes set? No, but I know it has them. Here, you want me to try? Okay. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, dude. This is horrible. Oh, here I go. Oh, wait, I got it. I got, got it. it. I got it. I got the bird's nest out. Jeez, I pulled so much line off this just now. People have been trying to tell me I need to be right hand retrieve, right hand retrieve, and I'm like, no. No. I like to have my strong arm on the rod and my weak arm. So right. this one here. So. So this, I'll just show you and then you can go Kate's giving me a crash course, which I'm all, right. all about. So, okay, so that in the water and then let's see which way this tightens. How's it going? Yeah. I just got here, so I hope so. This, so going back tightens it and now watch the bait. It'll go and it'll hit the water and nothing. Okay, and then and that's what you want. Yeah. So then, it's weird it doesn't have a click, but that's fine. All right, now back. Why's that not been explained to me? <laughs> Ever. I, was, dude, I did so much research and I, nothing popped up on this. Not bad. All right. And then when, yeah. So now when I cast it, am I still putting my thumb on it? Yeah, that's for like safety, but that, that will just, that's like, that's it. A little bit, but still. And then even after you do that, now you can do that knob just hair back this one yeah hair damn it i'm gonna try and get a fish i don't i really only have 15 minutes to fish because i have a happy hour i gotta go to so i'm gonna try and get one of these fish on the jig and then one on the sink gauge would like to catch one on each so we're gonna come down let's say your top three dude all down this thing is that a fish right there i'm gonna go right up tight on this There you go. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, and he's getting followed. Cast on him. He's got three fish behind him. Dude, cast on him. Yeah. That's a great bass, too. Uh, I think he, he kind of got out of there. Oh, dude, he whacked that so hard. <laughs> that was so sick. <laughs> All right. Dude, that's such a sick fish. He hit that so hard. I'm, I'm sorry to do this to you. I know you followed me for fly fishing, but I've just had way too much fun today. And this is the first fish I've caught. Look at that thing. Oh, baby. You guys, oh my gosh. Sick little, I don't know, pound and a half fish. <laughs> Let's see if we get one more. All right, gang. I hate to break, I hate to tell you this and I hate to do this to you, but I had way too much fun doing that. So I'm gonna be doing that a lot. <laughs> 
Uh, Cade. Shout out to my buddy Cade for freaking showing oh. me around. <laughs> uh, showing me how to rig my bait, bait caster so that it doesn't free spool at all times. And uh, yeah, just a really fun day. I caught one fish. I had one bite, literally. Fortunately, I was able to convert. And it was at a golf course, so it's like doesn't really count. But it counts. But sick day. Um, and I'm stoked for this. Uh, I'm actually really, really excited to keep doing this. So um, if you subscribe to me and that pisses you off, I'm sorry. Uh, hopefully, you guys will come along with me in this journey and kind of see that this is a really fun way to fish and that you can do both and it's totally fine. Um, but yeah, so I'll catch you guys next week or in a couple days. I'm kind of posting twice a week right now. So we'll see how long I can keep up with that. But later, guys.